Hey guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you a few ways on how to turn pictures into flat 3D prints from something basic like these to slightly more intricate designs like these prints here. So make sure to watch this video till the end. So let's start with the simplest way on how to convert your picture into a flat 3D print. If you have these kind of pictures where the design itself comprises of one single element, almost like a silhouette or a shadow type of picture, the fastest way to do it is to convert the picture into an SVG format using an online converter. My go-to website is this website here. You can use a JPEG or JPG format pictures as long as they have a clean background. Otherwise, it might be a good idea to remove the background first. If you have a Mac, to remove the background, simply right-click on a picture, select Quick Action, and click Remove Background. Then you want to upload the picture, select SVG, hit Convert, and download the SVG file to your computer. Then open your slicer, and just drag and drop that file into your slicer. I'm using Bamboo Studio for this example, and you can resize it as necessary by clicking this Rescale button. If you only want to change the thickness of your print, uncheck this box and type in the height that you want and press enter. So naturally, you're printing your model as one element in single color, but if you're feeling fancy and you have steady hands, you can even use the paint tool to paint your model in the slicer before printing. This is a great method to print minimalistic designs, and if you don't want to create the design on your own, there are a lot of pictures you can find online. Simply type in the design that you want, plus the word silhouette, and you'll find pretty much all sorts of designs like these. Now before I show you the second method, let's talk about our today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay doesn't only manufacture custom PCBs, but they also offer a lot of other services, including 3D printing services. They can print in all sorts of materials like resin, nylon, ABS, PTG, TPU, and more, and even metal like titanium. So if you don't have a 3D printer or you have a 3D printer that can't print specific materials, you can get them to print it for you. Just upload your 3D model to PCBWay, select the material that you want, and get your quote. So make sure to check them out, and I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now let's get back to our tutorial and step up our game a little bit. Let's say you want to print in multicolor because your printer supports multicolor and you have multicolored pictures like these. Notice that there are multiple elements in the pictures, like these white areas on black, or these black lines, strokes, and dots. So if you convert these pictures to SVG and then drop them in the slicer, they're going to have these weird random gaps. I mean, if that's what you want, then go for it. If not, you're going to need a CAD software, something like the Fusion 360 to create a model out of those SVG files and kind of fill in those gaps, so to speak, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So after you converted your image to SVG, open Fusion 360, and then you want to create a sketch. Choose a plane and you want to import the SVG file. Optionally, before doing that, you can also sketch a box first, just a reference for the size of your model. Just click at any point on the plane once, type in the length and the width, and you can use the tab key to switch between those two. Then click again anywhere on the plane, Go to Insert, select Insert SVG, then select your SVG file to import it. Resize and move your SVG file to kind of fit in that box using these icons here. Then hit Finish Sketch. Next, click Extrude and you want to choose the areas of the same color in your original picture. Let's extrude this to 1mm and choose New Component. Do the same thing for all the other individual colors. You can also change the color of these grouped components if you want, but keep in mind that you still end up with one colored mesh since the SDL file that you export will not include any color information. That's why I don't really do this to save time, but I can imagine that it can be helpful sometimes to see our model in colors. So to do it, right click any component, then select Appearance. Let's choose this plastic here, doesn't have to be any specific one. Drag that in this window here and change its color. 
Repeat that for the other colors. Then you want to grab that and drop it on the component. Now let's rename these components and then export them as SDL file. Right click on the component, select Save as Mesh, click OK and save that to your computer. Do that for each of these components. Now drag all of the SDL files and drop them in our slicer. Don't forget to change the colors, hit slice and then print. These prints look awesome, don't they? One thing that's important to mention is that you won't always get a clean SVG file when you convert your multicolor pictures using this website. It works great if your pictures have crisp black outlines and if the colored areas have good contrast with the outlines. But it's not going to work properly if the colors of your pictures have poor contrast. For instance, dark gray and black, like blue and pastel blue, yellow and white and so on. You'll just end up with SVG files like these. So I'm going to show you what you can do if you have such pictures. So there's multiple ways you can turn this kind of pictures into something that's workable. What you basically want to do is to trace the image by drawing lines to separate each colored areas. You can do it manually directly in Fusion 360, but it's going to be a very tedious process. So what you want is this free illustrator software, which is called Inkscape. First, let's open the software, grab our picture and drop it in. I like to have this smooth option checked because it works the best for me. Now you want to go to path, then trace bitmap. Go to multicolor, then select colors for the detection mode. Then you want to take all of these options. Make sure to click on the original picture so you can get a live preview of what your SVG file would look like. Reduce and increase the value of scans as necessary until all the colors that you want show up in the live preview. I also like to increase the smoothness a little bit, somewhere around 0.3 to 0.7, else you'll end up with these jaggy lines and you don't want that. Click apply, move your original picture to the side or delete it, then you want to export that as plain SVG. Once that's done, open it in Fusion 360. Now, there are times where you'll end up with these multiple lines, especially if the resolution or the quality of your picture is poor. So what I'll do is to select everything, then deselect all surfaces except the one that make up the outline and extrude. Then you can extrude these other remaining surfaces. If you want to have the bottom layer to be one solid color, first hide all the components, select everything, then extrude it in the other direction and save that as a new component. Then export each component as SDL, drag and drop them into our slicer, change the filament colors, hit slice and print. This method is not my favorite method since it is rather time consuming and you need to experiment and play around with the settings a lot until you get something that's workable. And when it's done, you still need to open it in a CAD software and create a 3D model out of it before you can import it in your slicer. It is a lengthy process. Now I'm going to show you another method, which is the simplest, fuss free and probably the quickest way to turn all of those pictures into ready to print files by using this image to keychain tool, which is made available in Maker Lab just recently. You can access it by visiting makerworld.com, then click Maker Lab and select Image to Keychain Tool. You can turn any picture into a printable flat 3D file, even this picture with a lot of details in it. Just upload your picture and wait for it to generate the 3D model automatically for you. If you have the AMS light, naturally you want to limit your colors to 4. So choose the colors that best represent the filament that you have. As of now, you are limited to these color swatches and you can't change the hex color code, but I'm pretty sure they'll change that in future updates. The tool will automatically reduce the colors in your pictures to 12 colors max. And since we are using four colors in this example, which is black, orange, light blue and white, let's group all of these colors together. 
That looks kind of good. When you import this into your slicer, it will turn on ironing on the top surface, change the wall generator settings to Arachne automatically. So let's not change anything except for the size of the prime tower. Then hit slice and print. You can even use a picture with more details in it, like for example, this picture. Sure, you're not gonna end up with a super detailed print, especially when you're limited to only four colors. However, you do get a preview of what it would look like so you can decide if that's good enough for you or not. So let's try to print this picture. Let's upload that, click OK, and then change the colors. I'm going to change this darker brown tones to black, some brown tones to brown and some to light brown, and the lightest tone to beige. Once done, download that as a 3MF file. Bamboo Lab recommends that you use a 0.2mm nozzle to print your model. So let's choose this and hit download. I'm also going to print this file using the 0.4mm nozzle to compare the prints. So let's download that as well. So these are the results. Not that bad, right? Now if you look very carefully at the model printed with the 0.4mm nozzle, you can see these tiny little gaps, though you won't even be able to tell from a distance. On the other hand, the model printed with the 0.2mm nozzle has little to no gaps at all. And as expected, the print quality of the resolution of the print is better on the model printed with the 0.2mm nozzle. Well, at least on the top surface. What's interesting though, I printed both of them on the textured PEI plate, and the bottom surface of the model printed with the 0.2mm nozzle kind of looks smeared. I haven't tried printing them on the smooth plate yet, so if you have, please let me know how your prints turn out. Now there's another method that utilizes the translucency of the filaments to kind of create different color shades so you could get the most out of your filaments. The tool is called HueForge and it is gaining popularity in the community, but it is a paid tool. It has its advantages and disadvantages and it's not as straightforward as you might think, but it is quite affordable for personal use, so I decided to test it out. I'm not gonna cover on how to do it in this video, but perhaps in a future video. So I hope this tutorial is helpful and I appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment in my video to help the channel. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one.